Justin Price. Wow, man. It's good to hear from you. You sound we great. Talk Sunday. Let's not act like we haven't talked. <laughs> it's but been, yes, it's it been three days. Be, I it miss is good you. To be, it is good to be back after a two week hiatus uh, on the islands and uh, five time zones over. Uh, it's good to be back, uh, you know, joining you boys uh, for a little uh, ball football talk. Well, you came back with a new ranking attached to Tennessee's, I guess now freshman quarterback, but the final on three rankings moved Nico up to number one in the class. Uh, what did you think? And, and by the way, you were out there covering Nico and the Polynesian Bowl. Uh, but with that news, uh, what did you think? What reaction did you see from Nico with that news? Well, I mean, you know, he's appreciative. Um, you know, I mean, he's never been one that worried about the rankings, you know, whether he was – you know, the fifth quarterback, the sixth quarterback, the second quarterback, or the first quarterback. He, he he's he's always kind of just kind of has kept his head down and kept working. He knows that, you know, he's got a lot of room to improve. And uh, you know, I think that's one of the big reasons why Charles Power, who does the rankings for on three, it, it, he tries to project, and he just sees so much upside in Nico. Um, he thinks that where his game can grow to will be greater than the other quarterbacks, whether it's Dante Moore or Arch Manning or Jaden Rashada or Jackson Darnold, um, Jackson Arnold. I mean, ultimately, you know, he just, you know, it's a projection and he, he thinks Nico's got the most upside of anybody. And, uh, you know, I know the staff here is excited about him having seen him throw and, and, you know, back during bowl practice and, and Josh Heupel having watched him play last fall live in person. And, uh, you know, Nico's just kind of got that, that right moxie. We, on, on Ball Club Confidential, this Friday we'll have Joe Milton. And, you know, Joe talked about how, you know, Nico comes in with, you know, a great attitude and asks questions and doesn't think he's got it figured out, that, you know, he's constantly picking his brain and wanting to understand with Coach Halsley or Joe or whoever why, you know, they do what they do. And he wants to get it. He wants to understand it, grasp it. And, um, you know, I think, that, you know, the upside and the work ethic are something that, you know, Charles and everybody on three saw. What kind of gains has Nico made so far? I know he just got here, but, I mean, he's been here, you know, f- five, six weeks already. Have you noticed any gains? Have you heard about any gains that he's made so far, maybe physically or mentally? Well, I think, well, mentally, yeah, I mean, he's, he's got a much – greater grasp of things than he did six weeks ago i think physically though it's it's you know you see him last march and and it's easy for me because i've been with him you know last or two novembers ago last march this summer this fall at his football game out in california watching him in bowl practice seeing him at the polynesian bowl i'd say he's probably put on 10 pounds 10 to 15 pounds in that year and it's good weight, and I mean, like that's the thing. People see him, and they're like, "Oh, string bean," but he's really not. Like, you know, I mean, like, can he can he add a bunch more weight? Yeah, but I mean, like, he's not like tiny, tiny. I mean, he's over two hundred pounds. I mean, like, you know, tiny, tiny is a quarterback that comes in and weighs one hundred seventy, like, you know, Cade Klubnick did last year when he got to Clemson. You know, so I mean, like, he, he's. He's bigger than people think, and so I think that's where you'll see, like, the next month, month and a half for him before spring practice gets here to just do winter workouts and throw on, you know, five, six, seven more pounds um, just helps him going forward. What's the latest on Tennessee being able to add a cornerback? Well, you know, I don't see them adding anybody now. I mean, Davis and Igbenosin was – the guy that they had, you know, targeted to try to add, you know, they've recruited him last year, kind of come up short to Ole Miss back around this year. He obviously had enough interest in Tennessee to get himself admitted to school here, but then he kept taking visits. And when he kept taking visits, it was like, okay, Tennessee, I know what they've got there. I'm going to go ahead. That's my fault. It almost felt like the fallback plan. Um, You know, and he he went to UCLA, he went to Ohio State, he went to Michigan, you know, announces for Ohio State yesterday. And, uh, you know, it kind of is what it is. As far as adding any other corners, you know, I mean, I don't know if they will at this point. They sure won't right now. I mean, conceivably they could after spring practice. But I think the biggest thing is, is kind of see where you are with the freshmen in spring. You know, 
what about Danico Slaughter? What about, you know, Brandon Turnage? You know, where, where are they at? And I think some of the guys that were at corner last year, whether it be Christian Charles, maybe one or two others, they're going to end up at safety in the spring. So, you know, what, what's, you know, Gabe Judy Lally, the, you know, BYU transfer, what's he look like in spring? Um, you know, I, I think all those things are, are things you're, you're watching for through Tennessee. And, if you feel comfortable with where you're at, you probably don't add anybody. And if you feel a little queasy about it still, then, you know, I'd say they'll try to add somebody after spring practice. Austin Price is with us, VolQuest.com. He joins us each week thanks to Rick Terry Jewelry Designs. And, Austin, this 23 class that's already been wrapped up by Tennessee, it's really impressive, right? Highly rated players. I, I think it's uh, pretty good across the board. If Tennessee staff is looking at it saying, okay, what can we do better? How can we build on this and be even better in 2024? What do you think is the answer there or answers? How can they be even better in recruiting uh, into this upcoming year and into the future? Well, I think you just you, you, you have to take what you did in 23 and build on it. Now, you're naturally not going to have the Nico part of this class. But as you know, I was talking about when we taped the, the mailbag podcast at Ballquest, it'll be out tomorrow, how this class is, can be better than the 23 class is you have more depth. You're, you're deeper, you have more four stars, you have, you know, you, you know what I'm saying, like your, your lowest rate recruit is much higher in this 24 class than your lowest rate recruit in 23. You know, and it kind of, you know, starts to level out a little bit. So, um, you know, Tennessee's got to just continue to recruit, you know, the South, Georgia, North Carolina. I'd love to see them get into Virginia more, you know, in, in this state, obviously. Um, you know, I think you got to continue to kind of do well on the defensive side, but I'd love to see them, you know, be a little stronger on the offensive line. Like I think that's an area where they've got to improve going forward. They need more tackle bodies. They need, you know, I think they need higher rated offensive line. And that don't mean those guys will come in and play right away because the offensive line is such a developmental position. And even the ones that have had to play over the years, Jawan James, Darnell Wright, Wanya Morris, I'm not sure those guys were really ready to play as freshmen. Now, they were forced into it, and they handled themselves okay, but how much would they have benefited from sitting back and watching and learning, you know, instead of getting just thrown in right away? Um, you know, I think that's why it's so important that you have John Campbell be really good, the transfer from Miami, um, you know, really good development this off season from, you know, Gerald Mincy and J.J. Crawford. You know, I think that's – that the offensive line in 20, 2024 to me is very, very important. How cool is it for you knowing that, that you covered guys like Darnell Wright and others who are now participating uh, at the Senior Bowl, got a chance to see some of his, of his video clips, saw where the staff went down – uh, and paid a visit to the players who are competing this week there at Senior Bowl? I mean, I mean you know, no different than any other year. But, I mean, obviously, you know, some some kids um, I know better than others. Um, and, you know, a guy like Darnell, you know, I was fortunate enough to get to know him through his high school coach who, you know, is from Morristown. He and I both went to Morristown East. Um you know, Billy Seals is his name, and, you know, uh, Darnell's a good kid, man. You know, um, and, and the best part for your NFL team is his best football is ahead of him. I mean, and he's just 21, and he'll be 21. He won't turn 22 until you're in the middle of camp in August. You know, I mean, like, he, he's still really young. And so, um, you know, whether it be he or Kate or, you know, Several of them over the years that I've been able to be fortunate enough to to know, but more than just you know, recruit and you know media guy, um, you know it, it's it's cool to see those guys kind of get to live out their dream and uh, and have a shot. And so you you just hope you know they stay healthy and perform well and you know get drafted as high as possible and make as much money as possible. I mean, a guy like Trey Smith, you know, I. I tell kids every year when we talk about the draft, I'm like, Trey Smith's the ultimate example of you want to go to, you know, if you're not going to be a first rounder or a second rounder, after that, you want to go to a team that's established at quarterback. Because when you're established at quarterback, you are going to a healthy franchise 
that, you know, has stability, probably not have a whole lot of coaching turnover. That's that's where these kids, you know, sometimes get lost in the cracks is when they go to a franchise that has no established quarterback. You know, I mean, look at Trey. I mean, there he is, a sixth-round pick. You no, know, sixth-round pick because of blood clots, not because of his play. He was a first-round talent. But he goes to, if he goes to, you know, if he goes to the Raiders, if he goes, if he goes, if he goes to Josh's Raiders or your Bears, where's he at right now? Probably still, you know, right there. But you don't know. A lot more stability in Kansas City with Patrick Mahomes. I think he'd probably prefer to be in silver and black, but I can't speak for him. I don't think he cares as long as the check clears. Uh, I think he's probably good where he is. Uh, it's good to have Austin he's, Price he's, back. He's, beat, he's beating. He's beating up the Raiders. Yeah, that unfortunately is true, and uh, I, I hope that That's he's able to, to beat up a lot of opponents for the next few years, just take it easy on the Raiders, uh, which also could be easy to do if he wants to. Austin Price, each week, thanks to Rick Terry Jewelry Designs, making it unique, making it special, making it just for you. We want to be your jeweler. That's Rick Terry's message to you, Rick Terry Jewelry Designs. Austin Price, welcome back. Thanks for the time, as always. We'll talk to you again soon. Austin Price. Mahalo, guys. Oh, man. Look at him. You, you, you from Tennessee, Austin. <laughs> you from Morristown. Don't be don't be getting brand new on us, Austin. No, no. You you from Morristown. Austin Price. You can say bye. Like the rest of us country folks. <laughs>